When industrial plants operate, they produce carbon dioxide. What if, instead of becoming a greenhouse gas in the air, the carbon dioxide was stored permanently underground? The process I just described is known as carbon capture, and today I'm joined by Mei Chia, the global business leader for carbon dioxide capture and hydrogen solutions here at Honeywell, to explain carbon capture storage and why it's important. Mei, we're really glad to have you here today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here too, Laura. Great. Well, let's get started then. Um, Start off by just telling us what is carbon capture and storage? How does it work? Exactly like you said, Laura, in industrial gas plants, they're emitting carbon dioxide today. So if you think about carbon capture, it's like putting a great big washing machine on the back of those plants and capturing the carbon dioxide so that it can be sent to pipelines or to sequestration are sent for utilization. And then if you think about that washing machine scenario a little bit more, the solutions that go into the carbon capture is like the different types of detergents that you have. You have liquid detergents, you have solid detergents, and those are the different types of technologies that can be applied to capture CO2 today. It's really important because carbon capture will enable us to continue operating our plants but in a much cleaner way. So when you capture the CO2, you can get more than 95% CO2 capture from those plants, and that will reduce the carbon intensity of the process that you're operating right now, such as in industries like power, steel, and cement. So we're capturing the carbon before it even gets into the atmosphere. Exactly. That's so important. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about um, why carbon capture is essential toward meeting net zero goals. Carbon capture is one of the critical levers in getting towards net zero. Getting towards net zero is a solution of ants. You're going to do fuel replacements, such as replacing your existing fuel with a cleaner fuel, such as hydrogen. Um, and you're going to go down the pathways of electrification with renewable power. You're going to modify your equipment. You're going to reduce the, the current energy consumptions, right, that you're, you're running your plant with to be more efficient so that you reduce your carbon footprint. And carbon capture is at the end of that stack. The CO2 is still coming out. So at least 20% of the abatement technologies for carbon for for CO2 reduction is going to come from carbon capture. So it's not just one thing. Correct. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about Honeywell and what is Honeywell doing to advance carbon capture and what excites you about working on this? So Honeywell is at the forefront of working towards enabling our customers um, to reduce their emissions on a day-to-day -day basis with end-to-end -end solutions. Our technologies are enabling more than 15 million tons of CO2 being captured in the world today, which is more than 30% of the amount of CO2 that's already captured. In addition to that, in these last two years, our technologies have been selected in projects that have the potential to abate more than 20 million tons of CO2. So we're making big strides in this. And if I draw parallels to how much, what does that mean, right? I'm just talking in millions of tons of CO2, but like 15 million tons of CO2 is equivalent to 3 million cars on the road that you're taking out. Those are big numbers. Exactly. And thank you for putting it into perspective for us because sometimes when the numbers are that big, it's hard to imagine. But when you talk about the number of cars off the road, everyone really understands the meaning of that. Exactly, and I just wanna add one more thing. So in terms of the projects that we're actively participating in, we have been you know, recently working with SK Power um, to actually develop a, a demonstration plant that will eventually enable decarbonizing power plants in Korea um, with our solvent solutions. And in addition to that, um, earlier this year we announced our collaboration with Exxon in delivering carbon capture technologies that will decarbonize their hydrogen production to produce a lower carbon intensity hydrogen. Wow. 
Okay, that's a really impressive. And I love that we're working you know, globally, we're working exactly. together with our customers uh, to solve these, these critical problems. So this type of technology obviously is critical. What advances do you see coming in the future um, to even further advance carbon capture and storage? We as a, as a community are all focused on trying to drive the cost of carbon capture down and ensure that we are developing an ecosystem that supports carbon capture to be far more easily adopted in the future. So right now today where we stand, you can capture the CO2 from these plants because we have the technology, mm -hmm. but there might not be a place to put it. There's no pipeline infrastructure, or there's, there, I shouldn't say no, there's very little pipeline infrastructure. Um, we are starting to develop class six sequestration wells where we can store the CO2. And so uh, what we need to do is work as an industry to make sure we are developing an ecosystem that can enable a rapid advancement of carbon capture as it goes out into the future. Mm. So, so important to connect the technology with this ability to scale and to scale this globally. Tell us a little bit more about why carbon capture and storage is so important to meeting net zero goals. Carbon capture is a critical piece of the puzzle towards achieving net zero goals. And really it's very applicable to hard to abate sectors such as power, steel and cement, where the pathway towards decarbonizing those industries have to include carbon capture. In addition to carbon capture, are there other technologies as well that are critical in this process? You hit it right on the right on the head, right? So with you know, as you go towards net zero, the solutions will be a solutions of ends. It won't be just one thing. So it will be carbon capture and fuel transitions, such as transitioning to lower carbon hydrogen. Uh, including blue, including green, um, and it includes making sure that your, make, your emissions are monitored and reduced, um, and it includes electrification of your processes with renewable power. And so putting all those things together will lead us towards net zero by, by the, will lead us towards net zero. You mentioned that lower carbon hydrogen is also critical to the energy transition. Can you tell us a little bit more about that too? Um, so first of all, what is lower carbon hydrogen? Lower carbon hydrogen is hydrogen that's produced where carbon capture is applied on that hydrogen production. And the projects that I mentioned earlier, such as Beitang, are projects that are producing that sort of hydrogen. We are also getting very involved in projects that are enabling ammonia production from this lower carbon carbon hydrogen, um, which we see as a critical piece of the transition from current fossil fuels to cleaner fuels in the future. So May, this is all such exciting technology. Any advice for people starting out their career, how to start to work in this area? So I think it's, it's a couple of things, but there's two things that I've taken with me throughout my career. The first one is dream big and then make it happen. Um, and the second one is, well, actually there's three things. So the second one is be persistent. Mm -hmm. So you ask a question once, you get an answer that's 50%. You keep asking and keep asking until you get the answer that satisfies what the technology needs or what the market needs. And that's really how you drive innovation. And then the third one is have a thick skin. So when you ask that first question and they say no, keep going back and asking the question because if you believe in something, that's how you make something happen. So as you know, on our podcast, we always like to end by asking our guests, when you were younger, what did you want to do when you grew up? Exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, as a kid, what I wanted to do was be involved in something that brought purpose and meaning. And the area that I'm working in right now certainly does that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You nailed it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me.